if they ask me what's the sine of 3 pi over 4, I can grab my calculator and I can type that in. However, what do I need to make sure of first? Ooh, it's got to be in radian mode. 3 pi over 4 is a radian angle, so it has to be in radian mode. So that's why I brought that up. you got to make sure you're in radian mode or it's not going to give you the right answer. Now, here's the thing. They're not going to have 0 0.707 as an answer choice. Guess what? All their answer choices are going to have square roots. So if you do this, then you're going to have to compare the decimal value of all your answer choices. Now, make sure that when you're typing in the square root of 2 over 2, you must close the parentheses. If you do not close the parentheses before the division sign, it's going to divide 2 over 2, and it's going to give you 1 as the answer. Because the square root of 1 is 1, instead of confirming that the square root of 2 over 2 is 0 0.707. But the goal of this is for us to be using our unit circle. So we need to go and we need to find the angle 3 pi over 4. It's in the second quadrant. And we know that the sign is the y coordinate. If you're struggling to remember that, it goes in alphabetical order. Okay? Cosine comes first, sine comes C comes before S. So cosine is the X, sine is the Y. So I found 3 pi over 4. The Y coordinate is the square root of 2 over 2. So that's the answer. It's square root 2 over 2. Now, the calculator told me that, but it didn't give me square root 2 over 2. I had to recognize that, or I had to compare some answer choices. Okay, so cosine of pi over 3. I'm going to go to my unit circle. I'm going to find pi over 3 here in the first quadrant. Cosine is the x, so that answer is 1 half. Okay, so using the unit circle is not complicated at all. It's just a matter of knowing it so that you can use it. Cosine of 90 degrees. Cosine is the x coordinate. So I find 90 degrees, the x coordinate is 0. Now, Every once in a while, you're going to run into one like D, the sine of 540 degrees. Did our unit circle go to 540 degrees? No, it stopped at 360. Well, that's why we learned that stuff about trig beforehand. Let's find a coterminal angle for 540. Let's rename, yes ma'am, because the x coordinate at 90 degrees is 0, cosine is x. Okay, remember, coterminal angles just rename the angle. So, how do we find coterminal angles? Add or subtract 360. Well, it's going to benefit us to subtract 360 here because we want it within the range of 0 to 360. So, when we subtract 360, turns out the angle 540 degrees is the same as the angle 180 degrees. And the sine does not magically turn into cosine. The sine of 180 degrees. Now be careful, that's not your answer. Okay, we were just renaming the angle so that we now have an angle that we can locate on the unit circle. 180 degrees is on the far left. Sine is the y, so that answer is also zero. Okay, the sine of seven pi over six. Seven pi over six, a little bit bigger than one, so I'm in the third quadrant. Sine is the y. So that's negative one half. Cosine seven pi over four. Well, let's think about this for a second. If it's over four, the answer is going to be the square root of two over two. It's just a matter of whether it's positive or negative. So this is what I. This is the process I go through when I don't have the unit circle in front of me. When I just have to have it memorized, I think, okay, so over four. The answer for over 4 is always square root 2 over 2. 7 pi over 4 is in the 4th quadrant. So in the 4th quadrant, cosine being the x, 4th quadrant, x values are positive. So the answer is positive square root 2 over 2. Okay, so that's the process I go through if I don't have my unit circle in front of me to, to reference, which will happen to you one day. Not right now, but one day. How about the last one? Is 215 degrees on our unit circle? No. If you come across one like that, then you just make sure your calculator is in the right mode and you just type it in. If the angle is not on the unit circle, then you just type it into your calculator. I had to change my mode to degrees because I was in radians.
So this is approximately negative 0.574. Every once in a while you'll come across one like that. Now that's not really the purpose, but I just wanted to throw one out there that's not on the unit circle. Just use your calculator. Okay? Just use your calculator. Yes, sir. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's not on the unit circle, it will most definitely be a calculator. Yeah. Okay, so another question you could be asked is find the angle in radians that corresponds to the given point on the unit circle. So, they give us a point. Square root 2 over 2, negative square root 2 over 2. So, cos of x and negative y, I know I'm in the fourth quadrant. It's an over 4 angle. That's the angle that I was just dealing with. Um, so, theta is 7 pi over 4. Okay, you're just looking for where that point shows up on the unit circle. B, cos of square root 2 over 2. Positive one half. So positive, positive, first quadrant. Bigger x, so that's 30 degrees or pi over 6. They wanted it in radians, so I'm going to put pi over 6. Okay? Now, what if they don't give us the x and the y? What if they just say, identify all the angles in radians and degrees, so I'm just trying to get you to. Uh, start correlating those together, where the cosine is equal to one half. So when I read that, my thought is cosine is x, so I'm going to look at my unit circle for everywhere where my x coordinate is positive one half. So the first place that happens is at 60 degrees and pi over 3. It's also going to happen in the fourth quadrant at 300 degrees and 5 pi over 3. So theta equals uh, 60 degrees pi over 3 and 300 degrees 5 pi over 3. Most of the time these are going to have two answers. Okay? Most of the time these are going to have two answers because there are going to be two places where your cosine or your sine is positive or negative. Okay. So sine is equal to negative one half. Sine is my y coordinate. So I'm looking on my unit circle where I have a negative y. So I know I'm looking in the third and fourth. So I'm looking for where the y is negative one half. That's at 210, 7 pi over 6, or 330, 11 pi over 6. The unit circle is a reference material. Okay, that's really what it is. It's like if you want to know something in biology, what do you do? You flip to the back of the biology book, you look it up, you find the page, you read about it. Same thing here. I want to know where the sign is equal to negative one half. So I go to the unit circle and it's going to tell me where to find that. Okay? Alright. Now, I don't think from reading the standards, it appears to me that the only thing that they intend to ask you about are sine and cosine. But those are not the only trig ratios. You know that tangent exists already. Um, but we have what we call reciprocals. Okay, we also have what we call the reciprocal trig uh, functions. So sine, cosine, tangent, we know those. If you want to put them there as a refresher, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. Or tangent, you also need to know this relationship. Tangent is the sine or the cosine. Okay, tangent is the sine or the cosine. There are three that match. Cosecant, that's what the CSC stands for. Cosecant, you need to write this on there. I've got the symbols, but uh, you may want to write out the words. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So that means cosecant of an angle is the hypotenuse over the opposite. The reciprocal means you flip it. So sine is opposite of hypotenuse, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. SEC does not stand for the college conference. It stands for secant. Okay, secant. It's the reciprocal of cosine. So it's the hypotenuse over 
over the adjacent. Now, the way that I keep those apart is the cos don't match. The cos don't match. It's not cosine and cosecant. They don't go together. They're opposites. So sine goes to cosecant, cosine goes to secant. Uh, I don't really have a better way of keeping them straight other than that. And I wrote tangent right there instead of cotangent. That should be C-O-T. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. That one's easy. The tangents do go together. So it's the adjacent over the opposite or cosine over sine. Again, I don't think you need to show up on time or again. But if you're going to talk about trig, if you're going to talk about unit circle, I might as well get you in there too. Um, you might as well start getting used to and familiar with the reciprocal uh, trig functions as well. Alright? So, here's what I want you to do. I've got some instructions on. Uh, the next slide there, I want you to read. Um, okay, so we've got this ray that's supposed to end. It's supposed to start at the origin, and it's supposed to end at the point negative 5, positive 12. So if we drop this line right here, and we end up at the right angle, then we've got negative 5 right here. The x is that distance. The y is that distance. So what's the hypotenuse? 13, because remember it's one of our special triangles. Yes, you can do the Pythagorean theorem, but in calculus they, they use the special right triangle sometimes. 3, 4, 5, and 5, 12, 13. They like to use those. So theta, I told you, was this angle right down here formed with the x-axis. So if that's theta, that means 12 is the opposite, negative 5 is the adjacent, and 13 is the hypotenuse. So if I'm setting up these ratios, sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The sine of this angle is 12 over 13. I don't know what the angle is. I don't care what the angle is. I just wanted to set up the ratio, 12 over 13. So that means cosecant is the reciprocal of that, 13 over 12. Cosine is the adjacent, negative 5, over the hypotenuse, 13. It's important that you include that negative. Secant, we flip it over, but we don't like negatives in the denominator, so we leave the negative in the numerator. Okay, we leave it as negative 13 over 5. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, so 12 over 5. The 5 is negative, but again, we don't put negatives in the denominator, so I'm just going to stick it on the top. Cotangent flips it over, negative 5 over 12. Now, I wanted you to go through that process so that you could see where that other number comes from um, and then how to set up the ratio, okay? Um, but you don't have to go, you don't have to draw it out every time, okay? All you need to know is that the x and the y are the legs. So if you need the hypotenuse, you just use the Pythagorean theorem. Um, or, in this case, this first one, 9, 12, the point 9, 12, you can figure out that hypotenuse without the calculator. <coughs> Think special triangles. What did I tell you about those special triangles? It's not just... Yeah, it's not just 3, 4, 5. We can do multiples. Okay? 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. So 3 times 5, that hypotenuse would be 15. So the adjacent is the x. The y is the opposite. 15 is the hypotenuse. So then we can set up our trig ratios. The sine of this angle, I don't know what the angle is. I don't care what the angle is. The sine is the opposite of the hypotenuse. And typically, we don't reduce them, okay? Yes, I know 12 over 15 reduces, but just leave it, okay? Just leave it. Um, so the cosecant is 15 over 12. Cosine 